Michelle Rainey today. We've had a chance to stop and see Frank Williams today. We've had a chance to stop in and see Neil and uh, Neil Magnuson and, uh, of course, our, our friends next door at, uh, at the new uh, medical cannabis dispensary, or medicinal cannabis dispensary, sorry. And now we're here in the seats, uh, Vancouver Seed Bank. And if we take a look around here, we can see they've got bongs here similar to the BCMP with a good array there of some uh, rolling papers and, and various things. So many people ask me online, where do you go when you need to get something? You go to Vancouver Seed Bank. Now I'll flash this up. I'll flash up the, uh, I'll flash up below me the, um, the web address and various other things for, for genetics, but this is the place to go. If you're looking for a particular phenotype or uh, you're into your breeding and that, there's those out there that want to say they got genetics and then there's those that actually have genetics. Uh, bought and seeds here, been happy with them and um, certainly would suggest it to anybody else. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like. It's, it's just it's a small little shop, but uh, it's amazing what small things can grow into. Okay, so we'll see you next time. Cheers. To where we head off to see Dr. Hornby, and uh, this is in relation to World AIDS Day. Now, all day long at Carnegie Hall, which is right at the four corners of what's known as the war zone, and a lot of people don't want to go to at Maine and Hastings in Vancouver. Um, you know, it's a it's a place where there is uh, there's a lot of drug use and uh, and a lot of uh, poverty, and uh, and a lot of different uh, issues in relation to those those topics. Um, however, you know, this is where we were doing a lot of talks and we had a lot of things going on. And the Green Cross had a booth and the British Columbia Compassion Club Society had a booth and uh, Dr. Paul Hornby got up and spoke and uh, Bree, uh, my nurse, got up and spoke and, uh, and, and uh, very informative information about how cannabis is related to my illness, HIV AIDS, and how it relates to the CD4 count and it kind of really supports a lot of my own theories around cannabinoids and uh, and their profiles in, in in particular cannabinoid profiles as I understood it you know just you know they always work better and uh, I believe that Bree brought that out in in her talk and uh, and it was a very good presentation she put together and uh, in the research is, is is there it's conclusive and uh, clearly the the cannabinoid profiles being uh, being unstandardized worked better than the synthetic um, isolated um, single compounds or double compounds, whatever they were using. Um, I'm not sure what product for the uh, research, but uh, I clearly showed that straight cannabis, like what I'm smoking here, with the different cannabis pro or different cannabis profiles uh, or cannabinoid profiles matters. And what I mean by that is that there's different ratios, for instance, different ratios of THC, different ratios of CBD, CBN. And the reason I can't really get a lot into this lecture is that, unfortunately, um, there was a couple of different issues that happened uh, during the, the lecture and um, also a lot of background the beginning uh, that we're going to show. And then we're just going to kind of uh, cut it out and, uh, and I'll do a closing out little chat there. For that, I apologize, but I'll have some noise later. Um, it wouldn't have really been feasible anyway. But it gives you a general idea that we were at the event and, and it was really good because it was in support of World's AIDS Day and the Green Cross was there and they were doing a presentation and they were showing how cannabis helps AIDS and helps people stay down their meds and stay on their therapies. And you know, I was showing all these great different uh, you know, amino factors, um, you know, and uh, amino suppression. Um, you know, it, is a really non-issue. I mean, it's just it's it, it's amazing um, just how much disinformation versus real information. That's why I love the work of the Green Cross. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of, of of a lot of the research. Much of it I don't know about. Some of what they talked about was fantastic research. Um, of course, unequivocal. You can't really challenge it. And uh, with a doctor with four degrees or whatever it is, five degrees. Um, Dr. Harmy certainly knows his stuff and knows what he's talking about, and I believe him and his team have uh, have been doing some phenomenal research, and I believe that that's where it is. It is we're past the point now of trying to say that cannabis is safe, and we're well into the stages of showing that cannabis is more than just safe, that it's been a hidden secret for you know a hundred years through prohibition, and uh, and uh, I think that that's great. So let's go take a look at Dr. Harvey talk here, and uh, and just the beginning of it, and uh, and then I'll just kind of. Yeah, so we left off, so we can be a little bit more quiet here, so we can hear this. We're gonna try and go through this quickly because our time has been cut back. So uh, thank you, thank you. Hello, everybody again. Um, so basically, I was talking about the CD4 and CD8 counts and how. Uh, they have a mild increase, a mild effect 
but it's not a decrease. So that's a positive thing about cannabis. And this is supported in journals of the Angles of Internal Medicine and the Journal of Immunology in 2003 and 2004. Just to show you a graph of what, of what I'm talking about, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, placebo, so no cannabis at all, is the circles. And CD4 and CD8 count. So you can see that without cannabis, it's not as good. It's a lot lower. All circles are lower. And then with synthetic cannabis, is the squares. So it's about equal for the CD4 counts and improving it over placebo. But marijuana outperforms synthetic cannabis. The CD8 counts. The triangles are higher than the squares, which is synthetic, and it's higher than placebo, which is no cannabis at all. So. It's intriguing research. And now I'm going to pass you back over to Dr. Harvey to talk about why cannabis works as a medicine. That would be good if I don't mind you. I put a kind of a snotty little title to this slide saying that because cannabis is so efficacious, that's why it's illegal. There is a, a paper over here by a fellow named Fred Gardner who's from a political analyst from the United States, and he said that if the cannabis were legalized, the pharmaceutical industry would lose half its revenues very quickly. I've often thought a third, but it would be a significant cost to the pharmaceutical industry if indeed cannabis was legalized because it treats so many ailments and it treats them well. Now, to summarize cannabis efficacy, it's an immunomodulating anti-inflammatory analgesic. It treats a broad range of illnesses. Chronic pain and neuropathy are two examples of the analgesic properties of cannabis. I, I believe I said in opening that 70% of our members are managing chronic pain. It works well for arthritis because it not only analgesic but has anti-inflammatory properties. Cytokine release is a property of immune cells. When the receptor is bound on an immune cell, they release proteins called cytokines. Cytokines are involved in inflammation and also in pain. And there's no apparent toxicity to cannabis yet realized in the literature. Um, it's often said that there are no deaths attributed to cannabis. And it, I often consider it to be like an antitoxin. It uh, mocks up free radicals and uh, has a lot of properties that prevent toxicity to cell. Now at the Green Cross, we measure the most abundant cannabinoids present in any sample. That includes tetrahydrocannabinol, cannabidiol, and cannabinol. These are the most abundant cannabinoids present in, in cannabis that we receive in the society. They play an important therapy in one element, 